So thank you all for coming. Um, I'm going to give um, a brief update on where we are in, um, in precedent. And then we have um, some short presentations um, by representatives of the other networks and, and by Don DiNucci from NIDCR. And then we'll get into the meat of, the, of our presentations um, after that. So an update on where we are as far as numbers are concerned. Um, this is where we were last year. We had 336 um, active members. The definition of active members um, is um, a practitioner who corresponds with us, may participate in surveys, may participate in clinical studies as well, but we maintain uh, contact with them. Uh, not all of those are fully trained to enter patients from their practice into clinical studies. Those are the ones we call fully trained. And you can see we have 358 active members now. Uh, 216 of those are fully trained um, and enter patients from their offices into our clinical studies. Uh, when we started this, the RFA required that we have um, 100 members, at least 100 members, and we set our goal at 150, and any way you look at it, we've exceeded that goal, certainly. I would say the 216 are the ones that correspond most to that number. That's the number of practitioners who enter patients into clinical studies. So we've continued to grow over the years, um, even though um, we haven't been as active about recruitment recently because we're beginning to wind down the studies. Included in that 216 are 44 orthodontists who are part of a sort of a sub-network of orthodontists. I think it represents the only network of specialists among all three um, of the national um, networks. And that's worked quite well. well. You'll see that there are three studies being performed among the orthodontists. Uh, in that 216, we have uh, 20 uh, dentists who work in community clinics. That's been an effort in the last year or so to try to get more of those because as you recognize, the patients and the situation in community clinics are different from private practices. And we want to make sure we include um, that population in our studies. Uh, we also have uh, seven pediatric dentists now who are part of um, our network. We're not doing studies solely in pediatric patients, but some of our studies do involve um, young patients, and so um, they've been a source of many of those younger patients. Um, and then we also have this category called friends, friends of precedent. Um, they're practitioners who are not, for, for a variety of reasons, ge 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 geography or others, other reasons aren't prepared to fully participate but want to stay informed. And we have uh, 160 of those, and they're in 24 different states and 10 other countries. So our reach is quite wide uh, for this network. This is the geographical distribution of the, the uh, 216 um, practices who are actively involved in clinical studies. You can see we've expanded some into California that's primarily through recruitment of uh, community clinics and some of the um, um, Indian Health Service clinics. Um, and, um, but mostly, we're in the five states we originally started out with. And you can see there's a reasonable geographic distribution, not just in the high population areas, but also in rural areas as well, which we're quite happy with. This is a summary of where we are with respect to studies. And I'm not going to go into a lot of detail with this. Uh, Brian LaRue will be giving you some study updates. But just briefly to say that we have completed seven studies, including three of them that are across all three networks. That's what the uh, Condor indication is. One of them, the case control study of osteonecrosis of the jaws, the primary results of that study um, is being published in the Journal of Dental Research immediately. I mean, it's, it, 
I don't think it's quite out yet, but it's in one of the next issues. So that uh, result will be out there. It's a very important study. Um, the other two are based on surveys on the impact of dental practice-based research and on advancing primary care for our TMJD pain. Those are surveys that are done and the papers are being uh, prepared on those. The other studies we've completed, study one, which was oral disease indicators. Um, we had almost 2,000 participants. Um, the computer-assisted relaxation learning, um, a survey of dentin hypersensitivity treatment in practice, and a survey of dentist attitudes and beliefs for treatment of patients with special health care needs. Those are done and manuscripts are in preparation. The other studies are ongoing. There are eight of them ongoing, including study two on salivary risk that uh, we're publishing out of, but it's still ongoing. Uh, the outcomes of cracked teeth, the randomized trial on MTA versus calcium hydroxide for pulp caps, a survey of dentin hypersensitivity in patients, third molar extraction, indications and outcomes, and then the three um, studies in um, orthodontists, temporary anchorage devices, remineralization treatment of white spot lesions, and overbite retention strategies. So that's the, the status of our studies. We will, be, we will be completing all of those studies um, within one year. So we're, they're at various stages. The only one that's just beginning is a survey dealing with overbite retention. The rest of them are well underway. One of the things I wanted to point out was the fact that I'm not sure we have told you very much about what we've been doing with respect to disseminating these results. We write reports to NIDCR, but I'm not sure we report to you. And so this is just a summary of a um, handout that's in your uh, notes at the end of my section that just tells you how many different abstracts, manuscripts, and presentations have been given um, on these various studies. And as you can see, the ones that have been um, ongoing for some time, we've done quite a bit of presentation. Others, we're getting to the point of presenting them uh, the uh, introduction to them and the results from them now. So I'm not going to go through that in detail, but if you participate in a study and you're interested in knowing if any of this has been presented, look at the list of studies and you'll see what the abstracts are, what the manuscripts are, etc. Um, the other thing I will note is that the International Association for Dental Research meeting is uh, being held in um, basically a week and a half, um, in, in San Diego. And at that meeting, we will have 11 posters. Actually, the posters, most of the posters that you will see here will be presented at uh, IEDR. And in addition, there's a 12th poster dealing with the TMJD um, uh, survey that's presented on behalf of all three networks. So we'll, have, we'll be involved in 12 posters at that meeting, so it's another example of the dissemination um, that we're doing on trying to get word out about our activities. So um, with that, what I want to do is now turn to oh, one additional point about um, manuscripts. The last page of um, my handout in your notes lists the various studies that are ongoing in which there are opportunities for participation in manuscript preparation. On any manuscripts that come out of this network, we like to have participation by practitioners who have been involved in the studies. And we've been doing that in the past. Here's a list of studies in which we are in various stages of preparing manuscripts. If any of you are interested in any of these topics and participating in developing manuscripts, please uh, contact the PI of that study. I think uh, all the PIs are here today. Um, and let them know you're interested, because we'll be looking for practitioner uh, members of the writing team. So you don't have to feel obligated, but if you're interested in it, we welcome your participation. <laughs> 